Hi everybody, this is Angie from TourAngie.com and today is another Rome video from the golf cart tour. I've left the Spanish Steps and we're heading to the Trivi Fountain. So you're going to see more streets, more driving on the golf cart. It's a little bit of a drive. But when we get to the Trivi Fountain, I'm taking the camera out of the golf cart and going with me. So that way you all can see how crowded it is. This is December, the first Sunday in December. So with it being a Sunday, it's obviously going to be more crowded. But December is not near as crowded as the summer. And this place is super, super crowded, even for December, I think. My driver was telling me that... As long as you can see the actual step down into the fountain area, then it's not crowded at all, which you can. So this this is a lot better than, I guess, any other day in the summer. But you're still going to see a lot of people, and I want you all to realize that when you see, you know, pictures and videos of the Trivia Fountain on, you know, TV shows or on Instagram or whatever, to, on um TikTok, the um, it's definitely a beautiful place, but it's definitely crowded. The best time to go, from what I've been told by the golf cart guy or the golf cart driver, is between like 3 and 6 a.m. You'll have it more to yourself then. And they do say it is beautiful at night, which I've seen pictures of it at night. I did not make the trip uh, back to the Trivi Fountain at night but, uh, while I was here, but still, if you want some alone time or not near as crowded time, come around between 3 to 6 a.m. It's, it, Rome is relatively safe. You're not going to have problems. There are pickpockets. That's the biggest thing. Um, and pickpockets do tend to hang out at the trivia fountain during the day, so always be mindful of that. Um, you know, they're professionals and they can, you know, kind of distract you and, you know, pick your pocket. So just be prepared for that because it is crowded and that's what pickpockets take, take advantage of. So we're going to talk a little bit about Trivi Fountain, actually a lot about it, uh, some of the history and different things. So the fountain is the junction of, the ro of three roads. It's the terminal point and the aqua aqueduct, and you know Rome is famous for its aqueducts. This one was called the Aqua Virgo. And this is back at 19 BC when it was first started, and supposedly the water also filled the baths of Aragrippa, which was more than 400 years. If you look at the scene at, at the fountain, there's a scene presented on the fountain that shows uh, how the Roman technicians back in the day uh, found, their, found, lo, found and located the water for this. Um, supposedly a virgin helped them, so I think that's kind of funny. But anyway, this fountain was built, was constructed in 1732 to 1736. It was designed by Nicholas Salvi, and several worked on it to complete it. So, the word trivi for trivi fountain comes from the Latin word trivium, which means intersection of three, and that's what I mentioned earlier, that this fountain area was the junction of three roads. So, that's how it's called the trivi fountain. And for the aqueducts, aqueducts are still in use today. The most were destroyed uh, during the 6th century by the Ostrogoths and stuff, but the water is still brought in through an aqueduct to the Trevi Fountain and the aqueduct's name is called uh, Aqua Virgine V-E-R-G-I-N-E so there's a little bit more information on that so I have a little bit of information uh, some of the people of you all may have heard of or like Bernini. He was a, a famous uh, 
sculptor and artist. Well, in 1629, Pope Urban VIII wanted the fountain redone because this was a fountain back ancient times too. So he commissioned Bernini to sketch sketch drawings for a possible renovation to the fountain. Well, when the Pope died, so did the architect, like the the sketching and the attempt to fix it. Later on, it was in the like I mentioned earlier in the 1700s was when the actual reconstruction of it happened. But there, they do who the person that constructed it, Nicola. Well, he originally was the one constructing it. He there are traces of Ber, Bernini original art or original pieces of work in the fountain too or from his sketches anyway but I had mentioned earlier that there was a competition at the Spanish steps on who could build the Spanish steps or what design would build well they did the same kind of competition here for the Trevi fountain and the person that lost Nicholas Sel Silvi was he he was the one that designed it but he lost the competition but there was an outcry through Rome of wanting him to do it. So that's what ended up happening. He did it. And he worked on it until he died. And that's when other artists took over. So, yeah. Now you have seen the Trivia Fountain. And you can tell that there is a, there's a decent crowd here. But not near as crowded as most of the time here at the fountain. You could still see places to put your feet down when walking. So I just figured I would share that, that this is a Sunday in December. Yes, it's still crowded, but not near as crowded in the summer. You can actually get down in there and get a good view of it. So as you could tell, I've walked out and I'm walking back towards the golf cart, but I'm turning around because there is a little shop over here that has sweets like macaroons and cannolis and pastries, gelato. So I'm gonna walk back in it. So you can tell it's just at the corner here of the Trevi Fountain. And I got the classic, um, the classic cannoli, which has pistachios. It was really good. So while I'm, while I'm ordering my cannoli, I'll still talk to you about the Trivia Fountain, but get get a good look at all these sweets. So if you if you come here to the Trivia Fountain, stop in here and get you something sweet to eat. So anyway, back to some more Trivia Fountain information. There have been a few restorations that have happened. There was a restoration in 1988, and one in 1998, but uh, in 2013, Fendi. The company Fendi announced that it was doing a 2.2 million euro restoration that would take 20 months. They installed uh, lights to help the nighttime illumination of the fountain. They even had a reopening ceremony. There has been protests here. There was one in May of 2023, this last year, and it was uh, activists of a climate group. They vandalized the fountain and died, and died in the water with charcoal. So, now as for the fountain itself, you throw coins into the fountain, and so much money is thrown into the fountain daily. It's like one point five million dollars is thrown into the fountain. So, uh, for this past year, so it's like 3,000 euros a day in the fountain. That's a lot. The money is donated to church charities, so that's good. Um, back to the throwing of the, throwing of the coins. You're supposed to throw, use your right hand to throw the coin over your left shoulder. And there was... I can't exactly remember if you throw one coin, two coins, or three coins. One is to come back to Rome. One is to come back to Rome and be in love. I can't exactly remember that. But anyway, 
when you come here, use your right hand and throw it over your left shoulder. So we're done with the trivia fountain. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm getting back to the golf cart and going to continue the tour on down the streets. To stay tuned for my next video, um, where I'll be covering the next portion of my golf cart tour. This is Angie from tourangie.com. Come to my website, read my blogs, make appointments so I can help you plan your next travel adventure. Talk to you later.